In the last tutorial, we completed part one of our JavaScript tool tip. We covered some important things about JavaScript and working with the DOM. In part two, we will finish things up and in the process, dip our toes into the value of the keyword this, closure, undefined, and a few other JavaScript mysteries. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help to bridge the gap between novice and expert. With our tooltip project, we have gotten to the point where the tooltip is displaying using text that we placed in the data attributes. Let's look at that real quick. So here is our HTML page, and as we can see, tooltip is displaying. However, there are some things we still need to do. The tooltip doesn't hide after I leave that last one. So we need to hide the tooltip on mouse leave. It'd also be nice to fade the tooltip in and out when it appears. So it's not so abrupt. And then finally, it's probably going to be a good idea to delay the tooltip showing. Most tooltips, they don't pop up right away. You have to leave the mouse over the object for a little bit before they pop up. And so that's what we're going to accomplish in this tutorial. Now here's the code we finished up. We have a setup tooltip function and we call it down here. Here is where we assign the event listener and then that calls this function display tooltip. If you need to refer to the previous tutorial, I'll leave a link to that in the description section. All right, so let's first look at how we're going to cause the tooltip to hide. And that's going to be a pretty simple solution. Here where we're assigning the event listener on mouse enter, let's just sign another event listener. So we'll do that with lem.addEventListener. And this time it's going to be on mouse leave. That's the event we want to use. And when that event occurs, we're going to invoke this function. And then what do we do inside this function? Well, quite simple. Uh, up here in the display tooltip, we simply set the tooltip div style opacity to one. So we can do just the opposite. And we'll set that to zero. And go ahead and save that. Let's see how that works for us. So refresh, tooltip shows, tooltip disappears. So that's working for us. Now let's work on the fading in and the fading out of the tooltip. So to do this, we're going to create two separate functions. We're going to create a fade out function and a fade in function. And then instead of changing the opacity as we've done here with this line or down here with this line, we will call those functions. So that's how we're going to proceed. So let's first create the fade out. And let's set this up so that this is a reusable function. What we'll do is we'll create a parameter so that we can pass in an element, a DOM element, that we want to fade out. And then it will act on that DOM element. So, whoops, I'm going to put a parameter here for element. There's the structure of our function. Now let's go ahead and fill it out. So first thing we want to do is set up a variable and this variable is going to be equal to the initial value of the opacity. So that's one. When it's showing the initial value is one and then we'll fade it out to zero. All right, now we have the initial value. We need something that's going to iterate over time that over the course of a certain amount of time, it will slowly change the opacity. Now, the way we can do that in JavaScript is with the set interval 
function. And this is tied to the global object. This is tied to the window when you're working in a browser. Now set interval, what it does is you pass in a function to set interval and then it calls that function every so many milliseconds. And it does that until you clear it. Once you clear it, it will stop. So we can use set interval to iterate over time. So the way we set that up is going to declare a variable. I need to declare this variable because this variable is going to contain an ID for the set interval. And we need that ID in order to stop it. When we clear the interval, it will stop it using that ID. So we'll set that equal to set interval. And then like I said, set interval is a higher order function. If you're not familiar with higher order functions, I'll include a link in the description. But because it's a higher order function, we need to pass in another function. And then it's going to call that function over time. So I'm going to pass in an anonymous function here. Now, what are we going to have this anonymous function do? Well, basically, we want it to act on the element. So whatever we pass in, whatever DOM element we pass in, we want it to act on it. And so we'll do element.style.opacity equals op. I'm using this opacity variable up here. And we're going to slowly, over time, change that variable. So I'm going to set op minus equal to op times 0 0.1. So slowly, not really slowly, but over time, it will change the opacity till it gets close to 0 or it gets to 0. And the second part of the set interval function is how many milliseconds pass be between each invocation of this function. And so I want to set that to 10 milliseconds. So it's going to be pretty quick. So every 10 milliseconds, it's going to call this function and it will slowly cycle through and change this variable until it gets lower and lower and eventually fades out. Now, this whole concept here that we're able to use this variable to keep track of where we're at, even though this function is called over and over again, it's not the same code executing continuously, it's called over and over again. We're able to keep track of its value because of closure. We declared this variable outside of the function, but the function closes over that because it's part of the scope of this as well. If you need to review the concept of closure, I'll include a link to that as well. Now, we need to do one more thing in here. We want don't want this to continue running. So let's put an if statement inside of this. If op is less than or equal to 0 0.1, then at that point, let's go ahead and clear the interval. And the way we do that is with clear interval, and then we enter the variable that contains the ID that was received when set interval started. And then also, let's set the style opacity to zero. All right, that's our fade out function. Now, so you don't have to let watch me type. I'm going to copy in the fade in function. So here's our fade in function. Similar type of, of setup for this function. Really, we're not doing anything different there. Now that we've got these two functions set up, we can now use them and call them instead of this line here and the line below. So let's go ahead and comment out this line. And then, since we're displaying the tooltip, we want to call fade in and we want to pass to it this element that's the element that we're going to be fading in now technically we wouldn't need to do that because we've declared it in a variable that this function has access to because all of these functions are inside of a parent function 
So they have the same scope and they have access to this variable. But I've created these so they're reusable and so we're going to go ahead and pass in that element. So that's fade in and then down here we'll call fade out. And we'll also pass in that same element. All right, let's go ahead and save that and see how we're doing with the fade in and fade out. So there's a fade in, fade out. Oh, but look, I don't know if you can notice on the video, but it's not quite all the way disappearing. I'm going to change one thing in just a moment. But we can see there's a little jumping here that we'll deal with. But right now we're getting the fade effect at least. So what I'm going to do is in addition to setting the opacity to zero, I'm going to set the display to none. And that will make sure that we're not seeing any of it. Just extra precaution there. But since we're setting it to none there, when we fade it in, we're going to have to set it to block or it won't show up even if we change the opacity. Okay, So let me save that and see what that does for us. So I refresh, fade in, fade out, and it disappears. Okay, So that helped us. All right, now the third thing we need to do, remember, is we want to pause a bit between when the mouse uh, arrives over the element and when the tooltip begins to show. So that's what we're going to do next. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to work with time again, just like we do a set interval. Set interval allows us to iterate over time. We're now going to use set timeout, which allows us to delay when something happens. And we're going to delay the call to display tooltip down here in our add event listener. So let's go ahead and set that up with set timeout. And then just like with set interval, we pass in a function. And we also indicate how much time. But in this case, it's not the amount of time that passes between each iteration. It's the amount of time that passes before it invokes the function at all. And it will just invoke it that one time. And so we're going to have 400 milliseconds pass. Now, what are we going to do inside this function? Here's our function that we want to execute when that set timeout 400 milliseconds expires. And what we're going to, going to place in there is this display tooltip call. So that's going to delay it for us. So let's save that and go ahead and take a look at it. Jump out, refresh. We're not getting anything, so let's take a look at the console. Can it read property tooltip of undefined on line eight? All right, so what is going on here? Let me jump back here. Here's what we've done. Tool, display tooltip here. When it calls it on line eight, up here on line eight, it says it cannot read tooltip. It cannot read this data attribute and it says of undefined. So this is undefined. There is no data attribute on whatever object is being passed in. So this is the part of the tutorial where we learn about the value of this. So if we jump down here, on mouse enter, we are passing in this. And it was working fine until we place it inside of a set timeout function. Well, what happens is this refers to the object that invoked the function. And so in the case of the add event listener, it is the element. It is the li element. But in the case of set timeout, now that we've placed this inside of set timeout, the object that set timeout is attached to, as I mentioned, is the window object. And so that's what gets passed. And just to show you that I'm going to come up here let's just do a console log obj save that refresh now when we pass over window is the object that shows up right here okay 
that's the object that displays. Now, if we did not have the set timeout as a part of this, let me comment those out. Let's see what it would display. It displays the li tag. All right, so you can see that the value of this is changing. The keyword this can be a bit tricky in JavaScript. And this is one situation where you see that problem. All right, now we're going to deal with just a simple solution here at this point. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about some other ways to deal with it. But here's the simple solution. And this has been used many years in JavaScript. We simply do this. I'm going to declare a variable, let that, and set it equal to this. Now notice that I'm declaring this variable inside of this function here, not inside the function that's in that's being called by set timeout. And so now if we pass that, the variable that, it will pass the true value of this. It'll pass the li, which is what we want. So that allows us to correct when the value of this is lost. So let's keep that console log up here for a moment and just take a look at that. Save that, refresh, pass over, and we're getting the li tag and the tooltip shows up, okay? So let's go ahead and close that. So now we're getting a tooltip showing up with the delay Notice the delay, we go over it before it starts showing, go over it again, so there is a bit of delay. It's much better there, all right? Now we're still experiencing some issues. And let me show you that by, if I move my mouse quickly over this, see how we get these flashes? That doesn't look very good. So when we're moving quickly, That's causing a problem. Now, why is that happening? Well, the reason that is happening, let's jump back to the code. When we do mouse enter, it starts set timeout. After 400 milliseconds, it calls display tooltip. Now, it doesn't care if I'm not on the same element anymore. It doesn't care about that. It's still going to call it. So we get that delay and all of those, when we pass our mouse through all of those li tags, all of them start a set timeout, all of them get sent. But at the same time, we're also trying to fade it out because we leave. And so we get this bleaking effect, which we really don't want to happen. So how can we deal with that? Well, what we can do is we can grab an ID that is returned by the set timeout function and then we can clear that just like we did with clear interval there is a way to clear the set timeout as well and when we would clear it is when we leave so basically what will happen is if we leave before it invokes this function we'll clear it so that it doesn't get invoked if we leave after it invokes it well no big deal we do the fade out if we leave before this is called, it should already be faded out anyway, so it shouldn't be an issue. And so that's my thinking here. So let's go ahead and do let timeout equal the set timeout there. And then down here, we simply call clear timeout. And then what we pass in is the timeout variable. Whoops, I misspelled it up here. Now, let's think about this for a minute. Is this going to work? This variable is declared inside of this function. Will this function have access to it? No, because of scope it won't. And so I need to do this a bit differently. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to declare the variable up here and then just sign the ID down here. Now that changes everything because now this variable is in the scope of this function. This function here has access to that scope. It creates closure over that variable and therefore is able to clear that ID when it needs to. All right, let's save that and see what's happening. Come out here, refresh. 
Now, if I go down through it fast, nothing shows up. That's good. We don't want that happening. Only when we pause over it does something show up. But there's still a little bit of an issue. Let me show you that. If I go here and then I move quickly down here, do you see how it blinked up at the top? What's causing that? I go here, it blinks. The reason is because of the mouse leave handler. So mouse leave happens on every one of them. So we send a fade out. So if I start on this one, and then I'm gonna go down to the last one, we send a fade out on both of these two as well. And so what does that fade out do? Well, with the first one, it starts fading out, and then the second fade out gets called, it starts fading out again. It sets the OP back to one, and so we get that blinking. We get that blinking a bit. And so how can we deal with that? We need to do the same type of thing that we did with set timeout. We need to be able to clear this if we don't want it to fade out. But right now, this variable is declared inside of fade out. And so we need to make an adjustment here. I need to move the timer variable up here. Oops. And then down in this fade out, we don't declare it. We use the one that's declared not globally, but within this larger parent function. We use that one. And that's what we're going to set the ID to when set interval is called. Now, how can we prevent this from happening if we don't want it to? Well, when the first time we do fade out, timer should be undefined. So let's do this. If not timer, so if it's not undefined, so what this is going to do is that if timer is undefined, that evaluates to false in JavaScript. So if we do the opposite of that, it will be true. So basically what we're saying is if timer is undefined, then we're going to go ahead and invoke this set interval. Let me indent that. And then we'll put the end of this. Okay. So now this is not going to invoke if it has a number in it, an ID that is that is returned by the set interval function. It won't invoke. So if it's already fading out, we won't start it again. We won't start it fading out a second time or a third time. All right. Now there's one problem. Once a timer set in here it's going to remain in there because we declare the variable up here. It's going to remain in there, so we will fade out the first one. We won't fade out any others. I think that's what's going to happen. Let's just check that really quick. So if I refresh this, fade out that one. See, that one doesn't fade out now. Because there's now a number in timer, and so this never evaluates to true. So something is a truthy value. And so it evaluates to true when something is in timer. We do the opposite of it, and that changes it to false. So what we need to do is when this set interval is complete, we need to set that timer to undefined. However, in a tutorial I've I done several months ago on undefine. One rule that I've made for myself is that you don't set undefined. You let the system set undefined. If you want to indicate nothingness, the state of nothingness, you use null. And I'll include a link to that tutorial as well. So after we clear the interval, let's go ahead and set timer equal to null. Let's save that. Let's jump out, refresh, D goes away, goes away. So now it's going away. We can go across it fast. It doesn't bleak. We can go to the first one and then we go down to the fourth one. We don't get that blink. Now it's working like we would like it to. Now I'm going to do one more tutorial 
that deals with this problem. In the next tutorial, I want to talk about callbacks and using call and apply. And we're mainly going to be dealing with this area right here. This is a great chance to talk about call and apply and also some issues that come with callbacks. Now I hope this tutorial was helpful. I look forward to any comments and any likes you may want to supply. To continue learning, here are some suggestions. So you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed already, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.